Hi everyone. Now let us see uh, the procedure to draw the static force analysis for a four bar chain with two known forces. Right now the, in the earlier video we had seen uh, the static force analysis for a slider crime chain with two known forces. The process is somewhat similar. Almost all the steps are similar. But the only thing is instead of slider we are having another one bar and uh, due to that some minute uh, differences are there in both of the problems so we'll quickly cover that and uh, if you have studied slider crank uh, static force analysis of slider crank with two force uh, then this also will be easy for you okay it, there is not much difference so first step is always drawing the configuration diagram so we are drawing the configuration diagram as per the measurements that, that, that are given in the question and uh, as per a suitable scale so sometimes it will be in meters or something which can't come in our uh, paper or notebook so we have to confine it into the space so we are taking a suitable scale so we are drawing it over here and then we have to draw the free body diagram so free body diagrams um, we are taking each link separately so this is the second link third link and fourth link separately I'm taking and I'm marking the forces which are acting on all of those links and the reaction forces also uh, in each of those links so uh, now let us consider the link 2 so on link 2 I have two forces and a torque so the two forces are F32 and F12 both of which I don't know the magnitude as well as the direction that is why I'm indicating it as zigzag line Similarly over here F23 is also indicated as zigzag line, F43 also is indicated as zigzag line. The only known force is Q. Similarly on uh, fourth link I have two unknown forces F34 and F14 and P. Now over here if you look at, uh, if you compare this fourth link to the previous problem there was a slider. Here it is the, um, uh, the bar. So here this force F14 was always acting perpendicular in uh, the slider crank's case whereas in this one F14 I don't know the direction so I have to find it out. Now let us start doing the problem. Uh, so here we are going to consider my link 3 first and the same procedure we are going to draw an F43 and F, uh, F43T and F43N uh, parallel and perpendicular to the link. Now here we can take this uh, Consider third link first or my fourth link first, whatever you are considering F34, if you are considering fourth link then F34T and F34N will become uh, parallel and perpendicular and if you are considering link 3 to start then uh, F43T and F43N will become perpendicular and parallel. So uh, whichever you are taking based on that we can proceed. After we have drawn uh, the free body diagrams as well as the um, configuration diagram, let us move on. Uh, now we are going to draw, consider the fourth link. I am going to consider the fourth link first. And after considering the fourth link, I am going to draw F34. I am going to split this F34 into two components. That is This is F34N and this is F34T. Okay, now I'm going to consider it like this and then I'm going to take the moment with respect to this point. So this is my point D and this is C. So I'm going to consider moment with respect to point D and then I'm going to calculate uh, so that I can I'll get the value of F34T. So that is what we are going to do. In the slider crank also the step third step was the same. So let's see. We have to take uh, calculate moment with respect to this point D. Okay, so here sigma M D is equal to 0. So here 
I'm drawing it here only because of the space constraint. Um, so here this P is acting at a perpendicular distance of let us say X from uh, D. So here I'm taking P is acting at a perpendicular distance of X. Similarly, F3 for T is acting at a perpendicular distance of CD. That is, uh, since it is perpendicular to the link itself, that is the perpendicular distance from the point D. F3 for N and F14 both are going passing through uh, the point D. So that need not be considered. So here, sigma M D equal to 0. So I can equate P into X is equal to F340 into CD. Now here also I am assuming the direction of F340. So here I have to do an assumption that F340 is acting in the opposite direction to that of uh, P. So here since P is rotating in anti-clockwise direction, I am assuming that F340 is uh, in the uh, clockwise direction. So here one assumption I have made that is um, F34T's direction is assumed. Okay. So here, uh, so when we calculate the moment, the only unknown is F34T. So F34T is equal to P into X divided by CD. So if we are uh, assuming it in the wrong way, we will get a negative value over here. So we got the value of F340. Now what we have to do is we have to draw the um, force polygon for each of these links, fourth and third link. Now before we go into the force polygon, we have to find out F3 for N also, right? So F3 for N's value, I don't know. I found out F3 for T's value. So how will I find out F3 for N's value? This similar way, I, I, I have to find out moment with respect to this point. Um, this C, this is B. So with respect to point B, I'm going to uh, take moment. And with that, I'll find out the value of F3 for N also. Right, so over here, let us see. Um, so you understood this one, so I'm going to erase this one. So here, this is F four three N, and this is F. Uh, 4, 3, T. Right. So here we had taken F4, 3, T as perpendicular to the link 4 over here, right? So I'll draw it once again so that you will uh, not have doubts. This is my fourth link and I have my F1, 4 and I have my um, F3, 4, T perpendicular to it and F uh, 3 4 N parallel to it right and I assumed that this direction is uh, opposite to that of P right So here opposite to this one, I have to mark it over here. So this one is going to come inside. So 438T is acting inside. And uh, mind it that this is not perpendicular and parallel to the link 3. This F43 is not parallel to link 3. It was parallel to F4, F3 for N was parallel to fourth link. And F3 for T is perpendicular to this link. But uh, parallel to this, I'm drawing it over here. Now, let us see. So here again, I'm going to calculate moment. 
with respect to point B. So the next step is calculate moment with respect to point B. Okay, now here I am going to assume the direction of F3 for N or F4 3 N. So in this step I am assuming F4 3 N to be acting, now since Q is acting in uh, clockwise direction, I am assuming F4 3 N to be acting in uh, anti-clockwise direction. So if you consider this one, here also F4 3 T also will be acting in um, in clockwise direction. So that is why I am assuming F4 3 N to be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Now if the assumption is wrong, we will come to know in the uh, when we calculate moment. So here F4 3 N, uh, I am assuming it to be in um, anti-clockwise direction with respect to point B. Okay, that is the assumption that I am taking. Now here again, in this case also we have to uh, take, find out the perpendicular distances from the point B. Right, now over here I have my uh, D, now this one, is it a perpendicular distance of let us say uh, we took x over here, so I will take uh, maybe y over here and f4 3t is acting at a perpendicular distance of um, let us say this distance to be z and uh, f4 3n is also acting at a perpendicular distance over here, so that is uh, acting at a perpendicular distance of let us say uh, V. So I have three forces which I have to consider in this case for uh, considering the moment. Since F4 3N and F4 3T are not um, parallel and perpendicular to the link, I have to consider all the perpendicular distances. Right, so let me just um, erase it for you so that it will be clear for you. Now, so let us write uh, the, uh, consider the moment with respect to point B. So I have Q into Y which is acting in clockwise direction with respect to point B. So Q into Y is uh, Y at a perpendicular distance of Y. It is acting at a perpendicular distance. Um, it is acting in clockwise direction with respect to point B. So I am taking it as positive. Similarly, F4, 3, T is acting in clockwise direction at a distance of Z with respect to point B. So plus F4, 3, T into Z. And then I have F4, 3, N which is acting at a perpendicular distance of V from uh, B. Right, so F4, 3, N is in uh, anti-clockwise direction, so I'll put it in the uh, other side of the equal to sign. So here F4, 3, N into um, V, right? Yes, V. So here my unknown is F4, 3, N, so I'll take all of the uh, uh, V to this side. So here I have Q into Y plus F4, 3, T into Z divided by V, which is my F4, 3, N. So here I got the value of F4, 3, N also. So now I have the magnitude and direction of F4, 3, N as well as F4, 3, T. So I can either draw the third link first and then draw the fourth links, uh, force polygon or I can draw the force polygon for link 4 first and then come to uh, link 3. Both are correct.
Okay, so um, this is step four. Now let us proceed on to our uh, um, force polygons. Right. So here I found out the value of F three four T and F three four N. Now. Um, let these figures be there because we have to uh, take some parallel forces with respect to this F43N and F43D. So that is why I've uh, kept this figure over here. So um, as the next step, let us draw the force polygon. for uh, link 4 or link 3 anything you can take so let us do for link 4 so if we draw for link 4 force polygon for link 4 then I have both F43N and F43T over here so both the magnitudes I have already got what is the known force on uh, my link 4? I have P acting over here. So P I am drawing first. As per a scale, any suitable scale you take, parallel to this, P. P. Then I have uh, F43N and F43T. Right, so I'm drawing F43. So here when it comes to my fourth link, it is F34. Right, so opposite to this, I have F34 and opposite to this direction, I have F34N. Right, so this is what is acting on my fourth link. So here I'm going to draw the same. Uh, first I draw P, then I have to draw uh, F34N or F34T next. So parallel to this, I'm going to draw F34N. F34 and this is F43 this is F34 opposite to this F34 n and perpendicular to it I will have F34 T now the magnitude that we got for these I have to convert it into the scale and then I am drawing this force polygon right now we here the closing side is going to give me so the, now the shape of this polygon may differ for you when you are drawing it as per dimensions. Now I am just explaining to you the method to draw. So here this is F14 for you. So F14's direction as well as magnitude you are getting. So the direction is in the same flow as all of these forces. So it will be in uh, the same flow. The closing side is going to give you F14. And you are also going to get your resultant from here. So this is the resultant of F34N and F34T, which is going to be in the opposite direction to the flow. This is like this, like this. So the flow takes it here, but it is in the opposite direction. So resultant is always acts in the opposite direction. So here you have F34. Okay, so you, you can measure this value, convert it back into whatever scale you've taken, then you'll get the actual value of F34. Right. Now let us go to our link 3. We have to draw the force polygon for link 3 next. So, um, Let us see. So here on link 3, what all forces are there? Now instead of this F43N and F43T, 
I can mark this F3, 4 as one force over here. Right, so I have Q. Q is acting in this direction. So as per a scale, again I am taking a scale. So Q, I am parallel to this. I am drawing over here. Q. I just draw it a little bit downwards in order for space. So this is Q. Uh, I have drawn it over here. Now I have F43N and F43T. Now I don't need to draw these two because I've got a single uh, resultant of these two. So that is F34. So opposite to this, uh, your F43 will be acting over here. Because this is your F43. So parallel to this, but opposite in direction. This is F43. I'm drawing it over here and the closing side will give you the magnitude I know magnitude I know from here uh, after measuring this I converted it back into the scale I'll get the magnitude that same magnitude after converting it into the scale I'm drawing it over here so the closing side is going to give me F2 is this force f23 which is acting from here so i got both the direction as well as magnitude of f23 now what i have to do i have to take the same force and i have to substitute it in my link 2 and i have to calculate the torque so that is my last step so here let me just use this space so here uh, my uh, final step is drawing my link 2 and F23 I am taking over here opposite to that I am drawing F32 opposite to that I am drawing F12. Since it is a member with two forces and a torque, so here I have my T2. So um, I'll get T2 is equal to minus of F32 into H. H is the perpendicular distance between uh, the two forces. So here I'll get a value which is a negative. So input torque T is equal to minus of T2. Input torque is uh, in order to keep the system in equilibrium, what force, what torque I have to apply uh, to keep it in equilibrium. That is your input torque and it is always opposite to the couple. Right. So I got the value of T which will be positive because T2 is a negative value. So negative of negative will be positive. So that is your static force analysis of a four bar chain with two known forces. Right, so when you are uh, solving it with uh, actual dimensions, uh, be a little bit careful for the scale conversions that you are taking over here. Here you have a scale conversion, here you have a scale conversion, another force polygon. So this is where the things can go wrong when you are converting it into a scale. And also when you are calculating this H value, uh, please make sure that this line that you are drawing is perpendicular. And also when you are taking the scale, if you are taking a too much of a smaller scale, then even a minute uh, error in your um, maybe 0.5 mm or 0.1 mm error also can cause a huge shift in your uh, final answer. So um, always make sure that you uh, choose a medium, a moderate scale, um, you know, not too small and not too big. Uh, Know, when you're drawing all of these things so please let me know how you uh, like this video and um, share it among your friends and have a happy studying